Check it out, guys. It's here, it's finished. Let's talk about my new PC build. Hey guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer and educator helping you to elevate your story. And today I'm gonna to be showing you behind the scenes of how I recently built my custom PC and how you can integrate that into your workflow as well. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you some of the upgrades in my studio, specifically all of this stuff behind me and how it actually works in a real life project situation. So let's jump into it. Hey guys, I'm here with David Rivera, the man himself, tech guru extraordinaire. <laughs> Not sure what we're going by these days, but we're building a PC today. I'm extremely excited. He is an expert, at least I like to think so. Uh, he could trick me because I don't know all the terms, to be honest. I've answered all your questions. So. You have, you have. So uh, I consider him an expert. Um, <laughs> he's built a lot of computers before, and I'm really excited about this build in particular because we're doing something different for him. We're actually experimenting a little bit because in my background, um, I've traditionally come from the Mac world and now I'm transitioning over to the PC. So it's gonna be a really exciting opportunity to see what we can do with the power of a PC, but with the budget of, well, kind of an everyday man, right? We're not, we're not gonna go crazy. We're not spending $10,000. Um, <laughs> but right now, we were chatting about this earlier that, that the iMac Pros, they're $5,000. That's pretty absurd, if you ask me. We're um, gonna do this. For the power, right? Um, and so it's getting to that point now that they're not very customizable. Um, and I've been a big Mac person up, up to this point. And so kind of cross that threshold of where I think it's time for us to make the switch, see how powerful we can get with a, with a moderate budget, um, just to see what we can do. And now traditionally, uh, in the composing world, in the audio world, we use a master computer like a Mac or a PC, and then we slave it to multiple other computers for additional power. But through our chats, we've been talking that it is, we hope, and we're gonna experiment with this, we, we believe that with one machine, with a properly equipped one machine, one PC, we can actually create one beast that can do all that multiple computers can do in the past. So we're excited to see how this goes and we're gonna dive into the nitty gritty as we go. So before we start, before sure. we actually unbox everything and go through the process, David, why don't you just give a quick rundown of what we're working on, what we have to work with. We will be building one single computer, at least that's the goal. We're, we're experimenting here on my end. I have built uh, PCs for gaming, PCs for graphics, for video editing, but I have not actually done video or audio before, excuse me, I should. Audio. I've never actually played with uh, like we use digital performer, so performer or Logic Mac. on right? Mac. So I, we we did have a day where we kind of experimented, and this one is going to be basically a ton of RAM, uh, as much as we can cram into it with this motherboard and budget. And it's also going to be like a multi-purpose computer where you get to play some and video edit some, but as well the, your focus audio. Um, and we're gonna get started now. All right, David, so what parts do we have to work with here? So, uh, I guess the case, because Steven really liked the case. So we're gonna go with this NZXT uh, S340, the white version. We're gonna have a monitor, which is, we actually ended up changing it the last second. We're going with an Asus 27 inch because it allows it to tilt on the side. We're gonna have, I lost it, a uh, Core i7-8700 with the Gigabyte Z370 HD3. And we're, he's not going to be overclocking, but we're going to go with this super nice cooler. One of the best ones you can get in pants if you're not doing liquid cooling. Uh, we're going to have the GTX 1060 EVGA, 6 gig version, as well as a Corsair K55 keyboard. We're going to have four sticks of 16 gigs for a total of 64 gigs of RAM. And we're going to start off with one terabyte of SSD for Windows applications, and we will later be adding on another two, potentially four terabytes of SSD for all the audio files and everything. Um, lastly, he's not going to be needing a crazy ton of power. We're not going to be adding bigger graphics card or any more graphics cards for the moment. So we're going to go with just 500 
and it's going to be the course, excuse me, Cooler Master um, Light 500 Watt A Plus, and those are the parts. So let's get going. So, what do we have here, David? We have a <laughs> box that says white. But it says black, really small. <laughs> Whereas in the store, every other box had black here, and I'm assuming it had white <laughs> and really small. So, wow. It's a black and uh, yep. red case. So we went in for a white case, and. This is where your SSDs will go if you want to mount them and showcase them, or you know, just to make them visible right there. I'm just going to have some space down here, out of sight, but so basically if you need to change SSDs real quick in the future, you just unscrew this one right here, obviously unplug the cables from it, there goes your SSD. And how challenging would that be in a Mac? Okay. <laughs> so this is as your motherboard, the unnamed thingy that holds all pieces together as you put it. David, I would be so lost without you right now. <laughs> I would probably cry. Yep, just putting the motherboard, setting it on the in the case, making sure that the back IO cover. Uh, some of them have these weird, like little metal pieces. Yours does. Make sure that it doesn't actually go into one of the USBs because if you know if that happens, then the USB basically is unusable until you take out the whole thing and reset it properly. But everything's good right now. Not connect while PC is powered on. Well, guess what? That is <laughs> connected to the power. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, label. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Instruction manual. <laughs> I have him. I've already read them. <laughs> so we're on the power supply now. I'm Look not going to put it on of, just... Looks like Legos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making sure that this cable is going to fit back there. All right, power supply is locked and loaded. Next, you're gonna say phasers are set to stun. <laughs> well, David is hard at work. Really? Thought you show one of his white bills. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you were sitting there with me, <laughs> picking up the parts. How do we get black? <laughs> it was a white box. So he has this beautiful PC. This is actually the PC he used to convince me <laughs> that I need a PC. Well, now I am securing the power supply. You don't want it rattling, should you have to ah, this is the lock portion of the locked and loaded. <laughs> sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> so, I'm just getting David was mentioning earlier that this particular case is a little bit more troublesome than trying to get the power supply in because it has an extra little cover for it. The cover that you have to unscrew so, to make in board in place. This little cover doesn't let you see the power supply. It looks really nice and clean. Helps you with cable management, but it's a pain in the butt to put the power supply in. See, that's why we hire people like you. Exactly. That's cute. Check this out. I'm really excited to finally have some expansion options. So you can see how we have multiple USBs, HDMI, a whole lot more USBs, USB 3s and a lot of peripherals down here. So this is gonna allow me to really expand, especially when it comes to other devices. And I'm really excited about this particular motherboard because it has two extra slots in it that will allow me to get a couple more SSDs in there, or at least what will function like SSDs internally. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, David, but I think I can hold up to six SSDs now, right? Uh, you can hold up to eight, I believe. Wow. Because two, six of them would be on SATA ports, and then the other two that you were talking about would be M.2 port. Even so, with modern Macs, you just don't have that expandability option to house so many drives. And I think in this day and age, if you're gonna try to load a lot of samples, you're gonna try to do a lot of uh, just library loading, a lot of projects loading at the same time, you need the ability to switch back and forth between all of 
could drive simultaneously. So I'm very excited to house what I think, I think I now have five drives that I'm gonna use simultaneously. I'm excited to try it out. And that actually was one of the slowest parts, just setting the motherboard and doing the cabling nice and out of the way. I don't know how much you can see. It looks great. There you go. Great for Actually get it a little bit out of the way more. Starting to like a computer. <laughs> yeah. It is a computer. <laughs> you just plug it in and it did what? Uh, I just, we just found out that your motherboard has some uh, LED in it. Woo! Alright, we are now putting in the brain. The brain. That is the eye. Mickey the brain? <laughs> that is the eye. <laughs> I can't handle you. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> CPU. Dropping. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you just hit my head. There you go. That really is, that's the heart of the computer. Without that thing, it, nothing works. There you go. So I'm gonna skip the fan for the moment. And I'm gonna do... <laughs> cut! <laughs> ah, I just cut myself. Yikes. This is what happens when you build computers at midnight. They do <laughs> stupid things. But you know hey. what? Hey. I appreciate you. <laughs> You're a wonderful person. Hey. So that's the solid state. Solid state, is it? It's a you wanna feel it? Super like light. Whoa, it feels cheap. <laughs> Have you ever, it does, doesn't it? Have you no. ever felt a hard drive? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, hard drives are huge. I have like and four. That thing is eight. very thin. I am really shocked. All right, it's RAM time. I'm gonna ram it in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that. But this is the most RAM I've ever had. Um, some composers swear by having ridiculous amounts in the hundreds. Uh, the most I've ever had is 16. Uh, and that's what you're holding in one stick right now. I know, there's a one stick, and we got four of these bad boys, so. Here we are. Whoop, miss. <laughs> I'm Click. that you kept up the right way. Click. Yep. <laughs> that was the right way. We did it. <laughs> All right, next up, we are putting in the graphics. So we're gonna go for the one fan, but they had this one. So, ta-da, it's done. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the stock fan. Don't use trash. This is on I recommend. Unless you're doing like some hyper overclocking or something, you can find this online. They've done tests. This will do probably top of the line cooling for fan budget. And if you want to do more like hyper clocking or excuse me, overclocking, water cooling would be a better option. But this just is a standard rig like this one, no overclocking necessary. This will do the job just fine. Fantastic, right, here we go. Fantastic. Ha, we need fantastic. We, need <laughs> we are almost done. It's late. <laughs> Unboxing. You can see it's the user final name from the top. That's a glorious sound. Here we go, guys. Look at that. That's so pretty. So if you are looking to create your own PC, David Rivera is the way to go. He absolutely did a phenomenal job helping me troubleshoot the entire build process. He helped me pick out all the parts and worked with my budget. He worked with all of the crazy things I threw at him. And he, at the end of the day, he did a phenomenal job with it. Now he actually does offer custom build services where he will go and he'll do all the work for you as much as you want him to do. So if you have some specifications, he can help you with that um, and allow you to pick some of the parts. But if you just want to leave him to it, he can pick all the parts for you. He will price hunt for you. He'll build it. He'll actually ship it directly to you completely built with everything you need installed on it. Um, he did a phenomenal job working on this PC. Now let's check it out in action in the studio just to see how well it works. So the first thing you'll notice when you walk into my studio is we have my microphone behind me over here. Got a music stand, my violin hanging up. And as you walk over here, this is where I've repurposed my iMac. So that's what I've been using since 2010 to host all of my software and everything. 
um, and it's about to bite the dust, but it's still in good condition. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna keep this as a separate desk on the side of the studio. That way if I wanna do more admin work or maybe use some of my old software, if I need to access any of my old Logic Pro projects, or if I need to do some artwork using some of that stuff, uh, it's a good place to keep it. I have a Spanish guitar, mandolin, keyboard, I have uh, electric guitar, bass and acoustic guitar over here uh, with the keyboard and specifically I decided that you know I do a lot of live streaming where I have to go back and forth back and forth between the main studio and the keyboard over here so I decided you know what let me just get a wireless mouse and a keyboard that way I can just sit still and I can still see with my big monitors everything is going on so I figured that'd be a cool way to do that over here at the main station where all the magic happens we have three monitors in total and the middle one, I don't know the exact size, I want to say it's about 42 inches maybe. It's pretty huge. So this is where all the main action happens with my DAWs. And I have two side monitors. I decided at the end of the day that with the Asus monitor, the 27 inch that swivels vertical or horizontal, I found that that to be a really, really useful feature. So over here on my left side, I tend to use that for footage uh, to look for a game or a film. So that or artwork that way I actually have some mental pictures to write to and then on the other monitor I like to use that for my mixing board within my DAW that way I can scroll back and forth I don't have to ever have to leave that um, it also works really well for Vienna Ensemble Pro to host all my instruments to leave them there so I experimented a little bit with going vertical that way I could have all of my items up and down and it works pretty well um, but I found that contact in particular it kind of cuts off some of the information because it, it doesn't have movable windows without popping them out. So I might experiment with it and, and see if that works a little bit better. Um, but for right now, I'm really happy with that. I have my audio interface where the monitor is actually sitting, my MIDI controller. I brought this guy out of the closet recently. This is the BCF 2000 by Behringer. It's a motorized fader. So it's basically a mixing board that connects to my DAW. So when I'm working over here in Digital Performer, which I'm now learning using PC, it connects to the mixing board over here that's on the monitor. So every time I move one of the faders, it'll actually move with it. So for example, if I just go to like the beginning of this movie scene I was recently doing, I can go over here and turn up and down. My name is Magatwe, founder of Skinny Skin. I can use the mute buttons, the solo buttons. So right now it's just music. Kind of like that. So that is incredibly useful to have at my fingertips, literally, so that as I'm working really fast, as soon as I have an idea, I can capture it with my keyboard or with a live instrument using my microphone, and then I can use my faders to very quickly go up and down, specifically the mutes and the solo buttons. Those are incredibly useful. And there's also some little transport features on here as well. If I wanted to fast forward, rewind, stop, play, etc., record, very, very useful for working in this environment. I also have over here an iPad that's on a swivel stand so it can go vertical or horizontal. And I love having this here because any app or any piece of information that can't quite fit on one of these screens because they're completely filled with other information, it's so nice to have something as simple as notes on here. Notes from a director, notes from the game developer, or more artwork on here, just having another surface or even to be a control surface for music apps so I can quickly uh, use MIDI like cr create chords and things that I can't do on the MIDI controller keyboard. It's so nice to have that extra functionality and just have an extra screen just have everything I need right there in front of me at all times. And then lastly we have the studio monitors the trusty old Rocket 5 by KRK uh, those have still been just phenomenal monitors. But I would be completely remiss if I did not acknowledge the true MVP here today, the TV tray. This little stand here is phenomenal because you know what? Gotta have my coffee, gotta have my water, gotta have my drinks beside me while I'm working. And it's so nice to have this little guy. And while I'm taking lunch breaks, really, really nice that I now have enough ports. Got my Xbox controller here. And because Windows does gaming so well, I can now actually have Steam sessions loaded and 
because I can multitask so well with so much RAM, I can literally just leave Steam games open and alt tab to them for a lunch break or watch a show or something. But it's just so nice that I can now do all the things from video editing to gaming to writing music to all of the basic functions of web browsing and email, etc. I can do all these things in one machine and I didn't have to create a master slave network in order to make it happen. So it is possible and I'm extremely excited to say that it's here, we're doing it. So far, I'm extremely impressed with how the PC has performed. It's done a phenomenal job with my DAW digital performer. Uh, with everything maxed out with a template of about 300 or 400 instruments, all really heavy sample libraries with nothing purged, no samples purged, so just full on loading them. I'm still only using about 50% of my 64 gigs of RAM and maybe 25% of my CPU. And I'll actually show you some of that on another video where I actually do some screencasting and show you some of the, the nuts and bolts behind it. But man, this thing is amazing. And I love that it can handle anything I throw at it. And I know as I go further into more expansive projects, especially if I start doing uh, just larger projects with hundreds of tracks in them, I'm gonna need that power. So I'm very excited to have such enormous power at my fingertips. And I highly encourage any of you who are thinking about making the switch from Mac to PC, um, I would do it, honestly, because of the customizability of having a PC that I'm not even using all the ports on it. Um, just knowing that I can upgrade on an annual basis, maybe just one part at a time, a couple hundred bucks here and there, versus having to, you know, every three or four years, sink $4,000 or $5,000 um, in a brand new machine going with Mac. Yes, there's a learning curve. Yes, you have to really get used to a lot of the functions, a lot of the shortcuts and things that are just different with the interface, but I'm learning a lot every single day about how to better customize this to my needs, and it's been an incredible experience so far. So I highly recommend reaching out to David. I'll put his information in the description below so you can reach out to him and start the conversation of how you can create your own perfect dream machine for your needs. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. How many of you are using Mac versus PC to do music production? Is there a particular reason why? Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.